Yeah, you like that? Yeah, you do. Oh, hey, it's exactly what you think it is. I, I mean, um, but anyway, as many of you noticed in my last video, I got a new table saw. So for today's build, I'm going to make a crosscut sled that is made for this saw. Now I did have a crosscut sled for the old table saw, but I can't use it on this one because it don't fit at all. It's totally different. Not that I want it to fit either because this crosscut sled is super basic. It uh, has nothing special to it. It's just a piece of plywood with a two by four on each end. And for the next crosscut sled, I'm gonna add some features to make it a little more useful and a little more user friendly and maybe actually make it a little prettier looking than this. All right, let's do it. All right, so before we get into this, we got to figure out our dimensions that we want this to be. My old one was about 20 inches deep and there were times where I wished it was deeper. But then thinking about those times, I realized that I wanted it to be deeper because I was using it in ways to compensate for how small my old table saw was. This one here, I got a fence that goes out to 36 inches. The old table saw, all I could get was 12 inches. So I was using the crosscut sled to make up for not being able to use a fence for longer pieces. So I don't really need it to be deeper, but I'm gonna make it deeper anyway, because for some reason my brain will not let me go smaller. Um, so yeah, we're gonna improve on the size of it and make it two feet instead of the 20 inches that the old one was. And I'm gonna make it about six inches wider, except I'm going to offset the length to favor this side because this is the side that has the table. And also I'm gonna put a stop block on it and I wanna give the stop block uh, more capacity on one side than the other. But yeah, I think that's the plan, let's do it. All right, so we got the base cut, and the first thing we need to work on is our tracks. We could make them out of wood. Almost everybody makes them out of wood. Wood is fine. But I wanted to make them out of metal. I wanted them to be steel and be rigid and fit in there and just be straight like forever, which is the idea of making them out of metal. Uh, I did an internet search trying to look for some that's already pre-cut, pre-made. Uh, I did not find any, but I did find these. These are made specifically for crosscut sleds. They're on Amazon, they're like 25 bucks. Um, they're plastic, so I got them. I kind of thought they would be a more rigid plastic, but they turned out to be pretty darn flexible, which kind of negates the whole reason I didn't want to make them out of wood. But I have them, and I'm just going to use them and see how it goes. This might be a great purchase, we'll see. So the first thing we'll do is we will put these in the tracks and you'll see that they slightly sit lower than the track, which if you're making them out of wood, that's ideal. You don't want them to drag the bottom. You want the only thing that it, it touches to be the sides, which is going to hold everything straight. So what we need to do is build up the bottom so that when we lay our base on top of it, it's making contact because we're going to glue it on the bottom of the base. A little bit of pennies and we're just slightly above the surface which is perfect. So go ahead and put pennies down the track. Don't be stingy. Go ahead and use a bunch of them. You're going to be getting them back at the end anyway so don't worry. So the first thing we're going to do here is lay down our tracks on top of the pennies, line them up with the front of the saw, and then spread some CA glue across the top of them. At this point, it would be a good time to make sure your fence is straight because we're going to use our fence to make sure this whole build is straight. So make sure your fence is in line with your saw blade. Then once we're sure that that is nice and straight, we're going to spray our activator spray on our bottom panel. Then we're going to use our table saw fence to lay it down nice and gently on top of our tracks which are covered with a CA glue which should hold them in place. Mm. 
yeah, that seems about right. So as it turns out, these things here are CA glue proof. It just literally chips right off. Well, since they didn't stick, I'm going to use a card scraper and scrape off the bottom of this uh, sled. And then I'm going to use a slightly less accurate way to mount these to the bottom of it. And hopefully, hopefully it works out. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to lay the tracks in the groove and then lay my bottom piece on top of it. And then I'm going to go through the back and to the front of the saw and trace out where those tracks lie at the front and the back of this panel. And then I'll use a straight edge to join those two lines. And then we will try to uh, screw these tracks onto the bottom of it uh, between those lines. And hopefully everything works out and it runs nice and smoothly across the saw. Fingers crossed. Say a prayer for me because I need it. All right, so that didn't work out at all. That didn't work out at all. I'm going to remove them from the bottom and I'm going to throw them away. That was a waste of $25. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. Just make them out of wood. The problem with it is, is they're way too flexible. They, they're, they're easily bent. So whenever you're screwing them in there, not only can it snake around in place, but whenever you, you tighten the screws down, they actually expand on the sides. And these things are already kind of tight to begin with. So you can't screw them very tight. And CA glue don't stick to them. So you can't just put them in the groove and lay this on top of it and have CA glue just make it stick and then screw your screws in there. It's... All right, so let's get rid of these and then have a do-over with wood this time. Off into the milling process we go to make a straight piece of wood the same exact width as the table saw grooves. Then from there we'll cut off two strips that will be a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the depth of the table saw grooves. That way they fit in there nice and neatly and won't uh, rub the bottom as the sled is sliding across the table saw. All right, so let's try all that again and hopefully it'll go a little better this time. Do over. So much better. Should have done that the first time. Then I put a small little reference cut in the board uh, so that it made me feel better about where I was putting my screws. Probably don't really need this. It's just a peace of mind kind of thing whenever you start driving screws into it. All right, so now we get to the first interesting thing I'm going to do with this, and that is adding a T-track system to the bottom of this sled so that I can clamp some stuff down into it. Now you need your T-track to be recessed into the bottom. With a single three-quarter inch sheet of plywood, I didn't want to hone out the bottom and then recess it into the bottom because I was afraid that it would make it weak. So what I did was I cut out sheets of plywood to cradle around the uh, pieces of T-track that I'm putting in there. Ideally, when doing this, I would use half inch or even three-eighths of an inch uh, plywood to match the, the depth of the T-track. But I didn't have any of that available in the shop. All I had was quarter inch plywood and three quarter inch plywood. Quarter inch plywood wasn't going to work, so the next best thing is to use three quarter inch plywood. Now doing it this way does rob me of a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch of blade height. I don't think that's going to be enough to really bother anything, but just in case I have this whole thing being screwed together so it's modular and I don't have to be married to any part of this design. 
So in the future, I can change it out if I want to, if it becomes an issue. And with that, I'm ready to start working on a front and a back fence for this thing. So I went through all of my wood in the shop and found the straightest pieces of two by fours I could find for these fences. Now I'm running it through the milling process to make sure each face of these two by fours are perfectly straight and the thicknesses are a uniform thickness. This is especially important for the front fence that will be at the front of the table saw sled because that's where all your pieces are going to be rested against so you want your cuts to be a perfect 90 degree angle. Now for the front fence I'm going for a perfect 3 inches tall because I'm going to install a T-track with a stop block on the front fence. Then I'm going to set my dado blade height to the same thickness of the T-track. Then I'm going to use that dado blade to cut the groove that the T-track will fit in. Then I'm going to forget to film it and I'm going to cut straight to showing you how it fits perfectly. Just like that. And then before we go installing this front fence, we're going to have to make sure it is perfectly aligned with our table saw fence. So again, make sure your table saw fence is perfectly aligned before taking on this project because all of our alignments for this sled, we're using the table saw fence as a reference. So yeah, make sure that's good first. And it should go without saying, but make sure you don't align any of your screws with your saw blade, especially if you're working with one of these types of saws because that can get expensive quick. And then repeat all of that for the back fence. And then it's time to install the fences T-Track system. Again, be careful where you're putting these screws at because depending on where the holes line up, these systems can trick you into driving a screw right in line with your saw blade. So pay attention for that. Then we'll get to working on the safety block that covers the area of the front fence where the table saw blade actually exits the front of the fence. The idea of this is to make sure the blade is not exposed whenever you're using this fence. Me, I'm going to step further and I'm going to add a handle to it. The reason I added the handle was because I wanted a designated spot for my push hand to be that was not in line with the blade. So this should keep my push hand safely to the right of the blade at all times. And with that, that is pretty much it for this build. I also wanted to note that if you're doing the T-Track setup like this, make sure you have your T-Tracks far enough away that your clamps don't end up touching your blade, especially if you're working with a saw like this. We definitely don't want to get in the habit of messing up blades and cartridges. But I'm thrilled with how this turned out and I'm excited to use it. It's almost like it came from a different planet from my old one. I'm really interested to see how much I use the clamp down system and the stop block system, especially the stop block system. I think that's going to come in handy a lot. But like I mentioned before, virtually everything on here is held together by screws. So if there's anything on this thing that, that don't work out for me or I just am not liking, I can unscrew it, take it apart, and, and change it. It's uh, completely modular, so I'm not really married to this design at all. I can, I can change things when need be. But if you like this video and you took anything away from it that's uh, helpful for whenever you build your sled, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you know somebody that's getting ready to build one of their own, send this to them. Let them see it. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one, hit that subscribe button and check out the other videos on my channel. And there's going to be more to come. Till next time, make something awesome.